cough, lose motions or any other discomfort. You always have a go-to solution like instant coffee. The super pills that you pop like candies. These super pills are nothing but antibiotics that sometimes people self-medicate without much thought and often suggest to others. Pharmacy stores also contribute to the instant relief hack without bothering about the consequences. But did you know that this over-reliance on antibiotics is leading to a rise of super bugs, a crisis where antibiotics might just stop working? So what are super bugs? Well, superbugs are strains of bacteria, viruses, parasites and fungi. They are called superbugs because they are resistant to most antibiotics and other medications. A few examples of superbugs are resistant bacteria that can cause pneumonia, urinary tract infections and skin infections. So what exactly are we talking about here? We are talking about drug resistance or antimicrobial resistance. Let's understand what that is. What is antimicrobial resistance? What happens is that over time, germs such as bacteria, viruses, parasites and fungi adapt to those drugs that are designed to kill them. And once these germs adapt, they change to ensure their survival. This makes what were previously standard treatments for some infections less effective and sometimes ineffective too. As a result, infections become difficult or impossible to treat. This increases the risk of disease spread, severe illness, disability and death. If germs become drug resistant, medical procedures and treatments such as surgery, cesarean sections and cancer chemotherapy become riskier. So how does antimicrobial resistance happen? Well, it happens naturally and over time. It happens through genetic changes in germs. While this phenomena can be slowed, it cannot be stopped. So what does the World Health Organization think about it? The WHO considers antimicrobial resistance or superbugs a serious threat to global public health. It says 1.27 million people died from it in just one year alone, that is 2019. This is serious because this is more than the annual death toll from malaria or AIDS. That's not all. By 2050, up to 10 million deaths each year could be caused by antibiotics and other antimicrobial drugs no longer working to treat common diseases such as respiratory tract infections, sexually transmitted diseases and urinary tract infections. The threat of resistance could also increase the risk of contracting infection after basic surgical procedures. So what are those factors that are accelerating antimicrobial resistance? Human activity especially misuse and overuse of antimicrobials, which are nothing but antibiotics, antivirals, antifungals and antiparasitics in humans, animals and plants, they are accelerating antimicrobial resistance. And the reason why we cannot drop our guard is this. Misusing antibiotics is like playing with fire. It can breed strains of bacteria that become resistant to life-saving drugs. So in other words, life-saving drugs can become ineffective because of misuse of antibiotics. And what do we mean by misusing antibiotics? Inappropriate use of antibiotics like not finishing a prescribed course, taking the wrong dosage or being handed antibiotics that you don't really need can lead one down this dangerous path. This haphazard approach when coupled with improper drug disposal or improper discarding of drugs that are left over after treatment creates a breeding ground for resilient bacteria and superbugs emerge. So this dangerous mix of misuse of antibiotics and their improper discarding potentially paves the way for development of superbugs that challenge our ability to fight infections with existing antibiotics. Do you know that even our rivers are not safe? A recent scientific study highlighted by the United Nations revealed that over 250 rivers across 104 countries are polluted with antibiotics to a toxic degree. This poses a global threat to humanity. That's not all. Antimicrobial resistance has a socioeconomic dimension too. A global study says poorer countries are worst affected. Deaths from EMR were estimated to be highest in Sub-Saharan Africa and South Asia at 24 deaths in every 100,000 people and lowest in high-income countries at 13 deaths in every 100,000 people. Poverty, lack of clean water and poor sanitation worsen antimicrobial resistance. People in areas with limited access to water are at greater risk of encountering drug-resistant bacteria. It disproportionately affects vulnerable groups such as women, children, migrants, refugees and individuals living in informal settlements. 
Well, super bugs aren't just bad for our health. They are bad for economies and our wallets too. Because of them, the World Bank estimates a trillion dollar extra healthcare cost by 2050. The United Nations warns of a GDP drop of at least 3.4 trillion US dollars every year by 2030, pushing 24 million more people into extreme poverty. So if antimicrobial resistance is left unaddressed, we may have a bigger crisis on our hands. Just to remind you, we have already seen projections that this superbug crisis may kill 10 million people every year by 2050. So to what degree is India affected? A government survey shows that an overwhelming number of inpatients are prescribed antibiotics by hospitals across India. Many patients are on more than one antibiotic and over 55% of such antibiotic prescriptions belong to the watch group. This means that 55% of antibiotic prescriptions are for medicines that are reserved only for severe infections. As a result, resistance among patients in India to certain antibiotics is one of the highest in the world. So why is this happening in India? Firstly, people have come to think of antibiotics as just any other over-the-counter medicine. They do not know the harms of consuming antibiotics without prescriptions. People want to avoid going to the doctor, getting tested and taking a few sick days when they can get a quick fix from the local pharmacy. But they need to be made aware that indiscriminate use of antibiotics not only harms them, but also the community at large. Secondly, there are some common scenarios in which antimicrobials are misused or overused even by doctors. One, when they cannot make a diagnosis on whether an infection is caused by a bacteria or virus and prescribe antibiotics to err on the side of caution. Two, when they know it is a bacterial infection but want to avoid secondary infection, this is where antibiotics can be conserved because very few people get such secondary bacterial infection. So what has been the result of antimicrobial overuse and misuse? The impact is clearly visible. Common infections are not curable anymore. Tuberculosis and urinary tract infections have become multi-drug resistant. In hospitals, infections are resulting in longer treatment times with use of costlier and more toxic antibiotics. What about new antibiotics? For a long time, we did not worry about antibiotic resistance because newer therapies kept coming in. But there has been no new class of antibiotics in the last couple of decades. This is because companies do not want to spend on discovery of drugs that soon become obsolete due to resistance. The need, therefore, is to conserve the existing antibiotics. Scientists are also leveraging new age technologies in the fight against superbugs. Researchers of MIT used artificial intelligence to discover a new class of antibiotics that can kill a superbug that causes more than 10,000 deaths in the United States every year. So is the government of India doing anything about it? It is. The health ministry has now urged doctors to mention the reason for prescribing antibiotics to limit their broad spectrum usage. Pharmacists have been urged not to dispense these medicines without a valid prescription. The small step of writing down the indication for which the medicine is being prepared can help the doctors review their decision on whether the antimicrobials are necessary. It can make them narrow down the suspicion either through clinical observations or tests on which pathogen is causing an infection. This can help them prescribe narrow-spectrum antibiotics. These antibiotics are targeted towards treating certain types of infection instead of affecting every microbe in the body. So if you can work with a needle, why take out the sword? If targeted drugs can help, why prescribe broad-spectrum antibiotics that are known to drive up more resistance? In fact, antibiotics are allowed to be sold in India only on prescription by a registered medical practitioner, but there are gaps in terms of enforcement of these rules. There's little awareness of them and of the dangers of unchecked use of antibiotics. These drugs are often sold over the counter without a prescription. So the latest guidelines are, in fact, a reminder. Now let's see how the world is dealing with superbugs. In 2015, countries adopted the Global Action Plan to fight antimicrobial resistance. As of November 2023, 178 countries have developed national action plans aligned with this initiative. But the onus also lies on we the people to make informed choices and ask the right questions of our doctors. So what can we do? We must ditch the pop a pill, fix it all mentality. Only take antibiotics when prescribed by a doctor. Talk to the doctor on the antibiotics prescribed. Spread the word, raise awareness, and be a responsible antibiotic user. Remember, we are not just fighting for our own health. We are fighting for the health of the community and for the present and the future of medicine. 
Let's stop these superbugs before they stop us. That's it in this edition of Connecting the Dots. We'll see you next week with more raging issues. Until then, it's a goodbye from all of us here in the Delhi newsroom. Take care and stay safe.